Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Major Garrett in for Nora. We begin tonight with the latest wave of COVID infections, making it feel, yes, like December of 2020. As an example, New York City is once again the epicenter of this stage of the pandemic, but it's not alone. New Jersey, Florida, Delaware, and Massachusetts also recently reported new daily records. This, as the national average of new infections approaches an all-time high set almost one year ago. Meanwhile, some medical experts are questioning the CDC's new isolation guidelines. Long COVID testing lines remain throughout the country, with wait times topping four hours in parts of Florida. The recent surge in cases has spurred another wave of postponements and cancellations. Airlines canceled more than 1,000 domestic flights today, adding to the misery of air travelers still trying to return home from the holidays. And the CDC has now identified nearly 90 cruise ships where COVID outbreaks have been detected. And in the sports world, the Holiday Bowl in San Diego was canceled just hours before kickoff, becoming the fifth bowl game COVID casualty so far. CBS's Nikki Batiste has all the latest from New York. Nikki, good evening. Major, good evening. The CDC is now saying the Omicron variant is responsible for nearly 60% of all COVID cases across the country as of Christmas Day. The highly contagious variant is ravaging New York City. Here in Manhattan, one in 50 residents tested positive just in the past week. Tonight, New York's COVID numbers soaring as high as its skyscrapers. The city has seen its COVID case average climb to more than 20,000 a day, a nearly 11-fold increase in the last month. New York is now reporting more new cases per capita than in any other state. Across the country, hospitals are starting to feel the impact. Just after Thanksgiving, Jackson Health in Miami had 37 COVID patients. It now has over 200. In Massachusetts, new cases are skyrocketing. It is one of at least seven states now reporting record high daily infections, more cases than at any time since the start of the pandemic. Testing sites overwhelmed, lines still stretching for hours. We're trying to be the proactive type and, and get it done. If we don't know, then uh, <laughs> We could be spreading it around a lot further. But the lines mask a bigger problem, says Dr. Peter Hotez. The hard reality is it's hard to get a COVID test. Um, it shouldn't be that way, but that is the reality. The misery continues at the nation's airports. Today alone, more than 1,000 flights canceled. Over 5,000 U.S. cancellations since Christmas Eve. Some of it due to staffing shortages fueled by the Omicron variant. And tonight, more reaction to the new CDC guidelines, which cut the suggested isolation time for those who test positive and are asymptomatic from 10 days to five. It's not only the healthcare workers, but we have to keep the essential, other essential workers in the workforce, our fire and rescue. People are often shedding virus even before they have symptoms and, and therefore are contagious. And people are contagious mostly for the two or three days after they start having symptoms, not so much six, seven, eight or nine days afterwards. But there's some pushback from the Association of Flight Attendants, which says it could create an unsafe work environment, which will cause a much greater disruption than any staffing shortage. One immediate concern is the impact of all those holiday get togethers. You know, Omicron is so highly transmissible that I've been advising people if you don't have to have a New Year's party this year and you, or you can delay it a few weeks, that might make a big difference. Adding to all this worry, the flu is making a comeback this winter. The CDC said today hospitalizations are up and two children have died from the flu so far. Major. With the hard numbers and the key realities, Nikki Batiste, thank you so much.